All right, we've got a lot to get done. I don't know if we're gonna be able to finish today, but I'm gonna keep going all week filming with you guys until we get this project done. Okay, so here's one of the first things that I gotta get done before we can get styling in here. So I've got these tubs with my soil and soil amendments, and before I was storing them over here on the floor behind my desk, but I just decided to move them into the closet here, the plant room closet, because there's plenty of room in there, and pretty much right now I just have my filming lights stored in there. So I'm gonna move all those, except not this, because this is actually my my propagations. I've got a little little baby monster Siltabacanas growing in there. So I do have uh, two propagation tubs that will be staying out and then the rest of the tubs will be going in the closet. Oh, and I have this vintage Three Amigos table. I was cleaning that and so that's why it's pulled out from the wall and then also I took the mirror down just because I was wiping that down and normally I will wipe down the wall behind it and also down along the floor, along the baseboard. Um, oh, we'll talk about spider mites. Actually, I'll just save that and talk about that in a separate spider mite video. <laughs> but there's a reason for why I pull that out, um, the wood specifically, any wood product or wood products, any wood, any wood furniture anyway. So I already finished wiping and cleaning everything down back here and I'm not gonna film the cleaning part. I'm just gonna film the updates and different little projects we're doing in the plant room. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot this back back into place where it was and okay, let's move these back there. This is worm castings, cocoa chips and fiber, cocoa peat. Okay, we've got pumice, cactus and succulent mix, jungle floor mix, aeroid mix, and then this is just potting soil. Put all of these in here. Oh, here comes the UPS guy. Yes, okay, I've been waiting for this package. So this is the humidifier I've been waiting for. It's from Elecombs. It's probably the most popular humidifier, at least that I've seen in the plant community. It seems almost like everyone has one of these. It's a really nice, sleek design. It's very modern, minimalistic. So the display on this one is different than my other Elecombs humidifier. That one has like an actual black screen where it tells you the, the temperature and the humidity level. This one doesn't tell you the temperature of the room. Um, it just tells you the humidity level. So this one you actually can remove this insert so it's almost like a bucket where you can pull that little handle up and take that out, slide it out and take it to the sink or wherever you're refilling it and put your water in and then you can slide it back down in here. Um, I'm not going to do that because I already put water in there so we're all good to go here. So we'll just pop that on and that's real easy to take on and off. It just has like a little lip in the very back here so I just pull that to lift up and take that top off. I also love that it has the dual mist nozzles up here that are 360 degrees. You can spin those around and direct where you want the mist to go. Okay, so we're gonna turn this on. So right now the humidity is 46% in the room and look at the amount of mist that's coming out there. That's actually that's actually a really good amount. I kind of love this. I, I'm kind of loving it already. I love the design. It's putting out a lot of mist. What, are, what setting are we on right now? Okay, so we've got the on off button here timer, screen off. It's got a child lock. Up here is the maximum and minimum of the mist. So let's see what it's on right now. So that's on the low. That puts out a good amount of mist for being on low, but let's try it again. Medium and high. Oh, you, you're gonna love that, aren't you? <laughs> you're gonna be all over that mist. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that back down to low. And then humidity level. I have mine set to 50% and then heating element. So right now I have that turned off and then sleep is at the very bottom. And it comes with a remote, which the settings on here are exactly the same. It's a mirror image of the settings on here. So it's really easy to remember how to use it. I'm gonna ask Alec Holmes if they have any coupon codes in case you guys wanna check them out and I will have that linked down below. Okay, now the floor is mostly clear. I'm just gonna finish moving the plants out of the way and then I'm gonna sweep and clean the floor real quick and I'll be right back and we'll start moving the furniture in. Oh, you know what? I gotta wipe this down too. So before I put the glass on, I'll wipe it down. But I think we're gonna have this right underneath this window. I got this on Craigslist for $25. It's from Ikea. So I love this because it's white, it's glass, um, it's anti-spider mite, which I will explain more about spider mites. We'll have to do a separate spider mite video, but um, they're not as attracted to white as they are to dark colors. I've got this grow light. This is from Fiat and I was thinking this looks like it would fit perfect under here. So what I'm gonna do is actually attach this to the frame before we put the glass on. So let me go ahead and actually run the cord up through here. 
Let's see, do I want to go to the back? Yeah, I will probably do that. So these lights have holes all around the, the top part, so like the base where you can hang the light. And so it's got three holes, two on the sides and one on the top on each end. And so I think what I'll do is, cause I'm just gonna have one light. I mean, I could double up. I mean, I could, I could actually double up and have one. I don't know if I need that powerful of light though for the plants I'm gonna put, be putting under here, but I don't know. I can always add another one later on, but for now I'll just do one across the back. So these lights come with these stainless steel hooks. I have two of them here. So it's a stainless steel nylon coated wire and one end is a hook and one end is a loop. So I'm just gonna slide the loop in. So hopefully you guys can see that. It's really easy. Just slide in the stainless steel wire. So you got the hook hanging out one end and the loop hanging out the other. And then you're just gonna hook it together and hang it on whatever you want. Wrapping it around the frame and hooking that. So there's the tie and it's just wrapped around really easy. So basically just hook it any way you need to <laughs> to make it work. And then I just ran the cord through the back here. And so I've got my plug in my electrical outlet right there. All right, now that our grow lights attached, I can put the glass top on and it should fit perfectly, except I'm gonna have to clean this again because I got my, my fingers all over the glass again. All right, let's get that on there and Yep, so the stainless steel cord slips right in between the glass and the frame perfectly. All right, let's clean this again real quick because I got my fingerprints all, all underneath and on top of this glass. All right, let's plug it in. And turn it on. And it's got a switch under here too. And I'll just pull back here so you guys can see what it looks like from a distance. So you can't really see the light. It's hidden under there pretty well. It just lights up the floor. All right, so that just added some extra grow space. And so I could technically grab, wait, where did I put, oh, here it is. I was like, where, where did I put my babies? My propagation babies. I could have this be a little propagation station for babies. And oh, both my containers could fit perfectly under here. All right, let's turn this off for a sec. And I've got one project that I wanna do on this side. Okay, we're gonna do a quick DIY. This is gonna be like the fastest DIY fountain ever, okay? Uh, and really simple and inexpensive. So I've got just a terracotta saucer and I just put the little felt bumpers on the bottom so it wouldn't scratch the glass because I think I'm gonna put this on here or at least I'll try it on this table first. So basically that just serves as like a coaster for our fountain. And then you're gonna need a bowl. Any kind of bowl will work as long as it can hold water and not leak. Um, so I just have this copper bowl that we got at an estate sale and I love how it has a patina. I washed it out, but it has a patina on it already. So I love that. Does anyone else love like the natural patina that kind of like greens and blues and turquoises that copper gets? I love that so much. Okay, so we've got our bowl on the saucer and then you're gonna need a pump. This is just a $10 pump from Harbor Freight and it's got little feet on the bottom so you can tell which way it sits up. And then on the front, it has this switch. So it has maximum and minimum and that's how you adjust the spray of the water. So I'm gonna leave it on minimum. Just set it in the bottom of the bowl. And actually on the back of my bowl, it has this little ring on it. I guess it's meant for being able to hang the pan up, but instead I'm just gonna slip my cord through it and it'll, it'll help be able to kind of, uh, it'll be like cord management. I'm gonna pinch it down in the back so that way the cord kind of stays put, stays down. There, so it's sort of tucked to the back and sort of hidden a little bit, a little bit more so it's not quite so floppy along the top. So on the pump, those little feet are kind of like suction cups, but just in case this doesn't stay put on the bottom of my copper bowl, I'm gonna use a rock. So I'm just gonna set this right on the cord. I have some white paper coated floral wire. I'm just gonna use a couple pieces of this for cord management. So I figured I would just have the cord running down the back leg here. I'm gonna put one more piece of floral wire midway down. Okay, and now just add water. I'm just using purified water. So 
So what we want to do is have the pump be at least a couple inches underwater. That way it's not splashing too much because if it's too shallow, like if it was only an inch above the pump, it might splash out a little bit more. Um, so we'll try that and see how that works. All right, let's plug it in. So depending on what pump you'll have, you'll just have to adjust it if it has that switch, you know, for minimum or maximum. So I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit and make it a little more gentle. So I have it uh, turned mostly towards minimum. And there we have a super easy, inexpensive hack for creating your own DIY fountain. Okay, this is another really easy, inexpensive update to do, and that is changing out little details. So this is a, a little, kind of like a miniature humidifier that I got last year, and I love this. I can move it around the room and you know have it on little shelves. It just fits into small spaces really easily. So you charge this up with a USB, and it's just really handy to be able to move around to different spaces because you don't have to plug it in, and it's not very large. It's pretty small. So this one I think is called the Stella. I got it from Mist Humidifiers. So the handle is a dark blue vinyl and I wanted to change that out because the dark blue just didn't really fit in and you know when you look at your space and you're like well let's see how how can we update this and just kind of make it a little bit nicer and it's sometimes just in the littlest details so what I did was I, I already had this fabric this is cork fabric from Portugal and so I just cut out a strip of it and actually what I did was I just took off the handle and I used their handle as a pattern or a template. And that just fits on there really easy. It just has a, a slice there on both ends and it's like a little button. So it's like a little button and a buttonhole. So using their strap, I just use that as a template to cut out two pieces. So I just cut out two pieces, front and back, and then sewed it all around the edges. And then for the holes, I just took my X-Acto knife and made two slices at both ends. And we'll just slip that right on. Just changing up the littlest details in our space can really make it fit our personality and the whole look and vibe we're going for so much better. Like, I love that already. Like, that is so much better, at least for my space, compared to the dark blue vinyl strap. And that cork is just as strong as the vinyl strap that they had too, you know, especially because it's doubled up. But yeah, just a really quick, easy way to kind of take a really small detail and totally change the aesthetic of it so it fits you a little bit better. I'm going to be filming with you guys all week on this project, so it's going to be kind of a long vlog. Hang in there with me. I love how that fountain turned out. I love the copper bowl too. I like it with the, the terracotta pots. And I organized some of the plants up here, and I'm not going to go through all the names of the plants in this video, but if you guys do want to see like a collection tour of all my plants that I have, or all the plants that are in the plant room anyway, I can always do that in a different video if you want to see that. So that new table came in handy. I think that's going to be perfect. Okay, now sometimes we have plants that just don't fit on any of the shelves or spaces that we currently have, so we have to cluster them together and create what I call plant islands. And so that's what we're going to do in the middle of the floor here. So to create our plant island, I like to start with a centerpiece, and so I will take a little table or whatever whatever kind of table or shelf or stand that you have and start with that. This is like a really tiny table. Um, it can only fit like one or two plants on there. I got that on Craigslist a couple years ago, and it's originally an Ikea piece. Uh, I don't have any more plant stands, so what I'm going to do is take plant pots that are not currently being used. So like this one, I'm just going to flip the plant pots upside down, and then one on this side. All right, first plant is gonna go on our centerpiece, and that's gonna be this Monstera subpanata. We're gonna do one more plant right in the back. Let's do the Burl Marks Fantasy. Let's put the Monstera Adansonii on this side because it needs it needs some light. And then we'll do Monstera Siltipicana on this side. And then we'll do the Philodendron Gloriosum over on this side. Okay, I've got another one that needs a home, the Calicia Orbifolia, I think will sit on this base. So we have the shorter, wider wash basin style pot on the taller, more narrow terracotta base. And I just like the different kind of looks that you can create by using different style of terracotta pots and mix and matching them. 
um, using them as plant stands. You know, they make a little plant stand, but sometimes that's all you need is just to lift your plant up like a foot off the ground, you know? Okay, now I'm working on this wall and I'm kind of redoing this wall because I just got a new desk and you may have already seen a sneak peek in other videos because I was filming multiple videos at once as I'm kind of filming this video. So I just got this desk on Craigslist for $30. So today is a plant spa day and what that means is I remove all my plants from the shelves and I take them into the kitchen. So basically my plants take over the kitchen and they get watered, they get their leaves clean, they get treated if they need to. So while all the plants are having their spa day in the kitchen and they're draining and drying, then I get to clean in here and just dust and wipe down all the shelves and also the top shelf and just make sure everything is um, dust free and hopefully pest free, you know, just reducing the risk of pests hanging out in here. Okay, I'm just sweeping up some of the leaves from that string of hearts. They can be a little bit messy. I'm also going to vacuum out this basket too, just in case there's any pests that like to hide in there. Um, I noticed rattan is a hot spot for spider mites to hide, so just a quick tip on that. I always clean and vacuum any, any type of uh, natural fibers in here. Okay, I'll just move this mirror out of the way, and I love getting everything cleared out so that way it's all fresh, and then when you put the plants back, you don't have to worry about you know pests you know having clung to something, and then they come and get on your plants. So I'm going to race through this part with you guys and if you want me to come back and do like a different video with like more I don't know like plant spa day and kind of like the steps that I do you know and the process of it but really it's just moving all the plants out taking care of them and then while they're you know like drip drying out there um, it, then I clean everything so that's, that's pretty much it but um, I, oh, and I have a very strong mixture of vinegar. It's like almost pure vinegar. There's a little bit of distilled water in there. But yeah, I just spray everything with a strong vinegar. Um, or you could use like your, your soap. If you make um, insecticidal soap at home, which I do that too, you can use that if you want. So I'm gonna speed up this process. I'm just wiping everything down. And then on top here too, I do the whole length of the shelf. Um, and up on the wall a little bit too. So once I get all that done, I'll be back and we'll organize the plants back into the space. Okay, this whole area is clean. I'm gonna grab the two big long cane plants. Those are two philodendrons, the Brazil and the Hartley philodendrons. Okay, the philodendron Brazil is gonna go right here. And this thing is getting long and heavy. And then the Hartley philodendron, I'll put on this side. And I do have these grow lights on the top. Hold on here, <laughs> this plant is heavy. Okay, so I've got the grow lights that are up at the very top here to add light. I have one facing this way and then one facing this way. I'm um, kind of like little bunny ears and so that will light up this top part. So any plants I have up there will be getting some top light. Um, so that way they're, they'll stay full, hopefully. Okay, the air plants should be done soaking. They've been soaking in rainwater for about an hour now. So I'm gonna take them to the sink. Um, I reuse this rainwater and I just water another plant with it so it doesn't go to waste. And then I shake out the air plants. And these are Tillandsia tectorum. So they're a desert variety. They're more from an arid climate. Um, I, I used to actually have more air plants, but I ended up just keeping the desert ones because I find them easier to take care of. I don't have to water them as often. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump out the water, water a plant, and then put these little babies on their jewelry display. Um, so this jewelry display I got at Home Goods. So when I found that at Home Goods, I thought, oh, that would be a really cool little air plant display for my two little air plant babies. So that's what it turned into. Uh, and I do have a couple of crystals up here too. I might put some more crystals in there. I've got my African citrine up there, natural citrine. I love citrine crystals. Okay, let's get these Talensias back in here. So I just basically slip them in the arms of the saguaro and they just hang like that, which actually makes it really easy for any other, um, you know, excess water to drip out too. I mean, there's just so many different ways that you can display air plants and make them look really fun. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at how I might wanna organize the rest of the shelves and I'll be right back. I think we're gonna put the fern leaf cactus up here somewhere and I've got a few other plants that I picked out to go on these shelves up here. Oh, by the way, if I keep changing outfits in this video, it's because we're filming on different days. I'm just kind of piecing this all together, you know, just a plant room, a casual plant room uh, update vlog. Takes me a while to do the updates though, so it's not like, you know, it doesn't happen all in one day. Um, it's kind of like a, a slow evolution of things. I think we're gonna put the fern leaf cactus on this side. Uh, oh, the other thing is trying to figure out the lighting and making sure that the plants are going into the right type of lighting for them. And sometimes you don't always know until you 
test it out for a little while. So I'm just gonna put the fern leaf cactus Let's see, we'll put it on the middle shelf here and see how it likes that. On the top shelf, I'm gonna put this propagation. This is uh, Philodendron Mame. Uh, we'll just put this right up here. Okay, Anthurium clarinervium. This one is gorgeous. I love this plant so much and it's been so easy to care for. It hasn't given me any trouble at all. So this one I'm gonna be putting right here on the second shelf. It does have a flower spike coming out right now. It, always, it has a spent flower over here too. Um, but this one, it has not unwrapped yet, so I'm just gonna let that kind of like poke out from the shelf like that. Haworthia cooperi truncata. This is one of my favorite Haworthias. It is so cute. It's got those bubbly, clear leaves. That one, um, I'm just gonna put it on this shelf too because the sun comes right in there, gets just the right amount of morning sunlight coming in. This is one of my favorite Cutisiform plants, Stefania erecta. Now, most of my Codex plants are either from Africa or Mexico, but this one is from Thailand, so it likes a little more water during its growing season. Um, it definitely enjoys those regular waterings and that really helps it to push out a lot of leaf growth and it's uh, cascading down here nicely. Now I love these leaves. They're like these little round satellite dish like leaves and they really will like work to try to face the light and they have lighter colored veining. They're just really, really pretty. Uh, oh, and the, of course they're aquatics because they're like little plant camels, right? So it holds its water or right, here, let's try to get that in focus. There we go, so there's its codex. But yeah, overall, just a really cute plant. I love it, very, very sculptural and uh, aesthetically pleasing. I'm gonna put this one up top here on the top shelf. And if I need to turn it to face either the window or this light, I can always do that. And then Philodendron plowmanii, I just finished draining at the sink, I just watered it. I'm gonna try this one down on the third shelf here. I'm probably not gonna have on top of my desk organized in this video quite yet because there's just plant projects kind of sitting up here just waiting for some attention. So I have like my vanilla orchid, um, while well, I have my, my green version up here, <laughs> my green vanilla orchid is up here waiting to get repotted so it's still in like its little nursery pot there. And then in this pot, this is another codex plant. This is Syningia leucotrica. It has really super fuzzy leaves and especially when it first puts out leaves, they're so white and so fuzzy, it's adorable. And then this little cactus in the corner that's a dwarf prickly pear is known as joseph's coat it has a creamy variegation and it also flushes pink when it's sun stressed it's actually really pretty it's probably one of my favorite um my favorite opuntias for sure and then this corner doesn't get good lighting so those last two shelves i'm not going to put any plants on i'm just going to use it as kind of like a, a storage space for like my watering cans spray bottles you know things that you're reaching for all the time for the plants and then i needed to find a chair for this area and so i was looking on craigslist and it states sales and I finally found one on Craigslist that I thought would fit in perfectly in this room. I like to find kind of unique vintage pieces and I love rattan and natural textures. So I found this uh, vintage rattan and bamboo chair. So I got that on Craigslist and it didn't come with a cushion or anything so instead I already had one of these cushions just this little round one so I figured I would just use that for now and then a throw just to kind of soften the back. Just to kind of soften that up when you wanna lean back and be kind of comfy and cozy in here, um, especially when it's like raining outside and monsoon season or winter time actually, especially because it, it does get cold. Um, oh, and I got this chair uh, for $10 on Craigslist. So yeah, 10 bucks, can't beat that. It's in excellent condition for its age. It's from the 70s. So I really like that, that kind of 70s boho vibe. There's some of the cactus babies. There's the rest of them. They love the rain. There's my adinium. I had to bring some more buckets out to catch rain water. Okay, I'm a little bit wet and frizzy after going outside, but I had to get those other buckets out there to catch more rainwater. Um, oh, I don't know if I showed you guys this uh, jungle cactus up here already, but I did end up putting this guy up there just because um, although it would look nice on a shelf, it's too tall right now. I love how this part is cascading down, but right now it has all these all this young growth, and so that's still growing straight up. But once that starts to cascade down, then it will fit better on a shelf. But for now, it's just up here growing under the grow lights. So I'm just gonna leave that up there for now until it starts cascading down more. And then this section over here, if I step back here, you might be able to see it might be a little bit backlit though. 
Um, so I've got my humidifier, my Alicombs humidifier, and then, oh, I did move this Zebrina. So I just actually repotted this into this white pot and I have it on this side of the room now. So I'm gonna test it out over here instead because it, uh, I was worried about it getting enough light, like direct overhead light where it was before. So I'll try it on this side. I bought this little white stand on Craigslist a couple of years ago. It's originally from Ikea. I, I think it's like supposed to be a TV stand or something, but it works to store a few pots and some of my plants up top here. I have this smaller monster that is now putting out another aerial root down there. It's trying to climb out of the pot. This one, um, it's actually a sport variegated monstera which uh, let's see if you're able to see that uh, green on green variegation there. Um, it was actually an accident because I didn't buy it like that. I mean, I bought the plant just thinking it was just normal and it was just 10 bucks at the grocery store. And I was like, oh, that's a cute little monster for 10 bucks. I'll get that. But then after I got it, it put out this leaf. And so it was quite, quite an accidental uh, find there. But I'm curious, uh, it's getting ready to put out another leaf from this one. So I'm curious if it's gonna have any more variegation on it. Uh, if I pull back, you can see the string of hearts. I do have a couple of regular string of hearts on both sides, but then I'm also propagating variegated string of hearts. So that's what all these little pots are. So um, that one is crawling along there and these are reaching for the light. And then that one, that one's got some little, little itty bitty baby leaves starting there, but so far everyone seems to be taking pretty well. Occasionally you might get some leaves that end up uh, shriveling up in there, but most of them seem to take pretty, pretty well. That pot up there has a one strand that I propagated from, and then I have one <laughs> really long strand. I stopped in the middle of propagating, but I gotta go back and uh, cut that one up and propagate that one. But yeah, so far so good with the variegated string of hearts propagation. And then up here, oh, this is uh, an adiantum, so it's a maiden hair fern, but look, look at how beautiful the little, uh, I guess, leaves are on the frond. Um, it's really large. So this is the Adiantum Peruvianum, which is gorgeous. And when they put out their newest fronds, they're kind of like, um, they're almost like blushed. You know, they have a little bit of color to them, kind of like a peachy, bronzy color. But yeah, that one is a young one. So it, it only has, you know, a, a few little fronds in there, but so far so good. They love a lot of bright light and they grow really fast with plenty of water and plenty of bright light. I've got a couple of white hanging pots up here. These also have the variegated string of hearts. So there's one there. The other one is right here. So those are also the variegated string of hearts. Up on the top shelf, I have a Skindapsis exotica. That one is looking lovely. I got that one actually at uh, Lowe's and that was like $25 and it was beautiful. I mean, I couldn't believe like all that plant for 25 bucks. What a good deal at Lowe's. And then, uh, oh, this Mykins was $10 at Lowe's. Crazy, huh? With the pot too, that cream pot. And then I already had this Mykins and it's, uh, it's matching its pot lovely. It got very bronzed. It got a lot of color to the leaves because I had it in really bright light under a grow light. And so it got really, really colorful. Um, uh, and I should mention, I guess when it's in lower light, they have more green leaves. And when you put it in the brighter light, they get more bronzy. Oh, and this is a Philodendron plamenii propagation. So that was a cutting. It's putting out a new, new little leaf start back there. And oh, a couple other propagations in here in water. Oh, on the windowsill, I've got some of my tiny weird plant collection, which I love lithops, euphorbia, like the little euphorbia obesas and symmetrica. So that's what I've got in some of these pots here. Those are symmetricas, euphorbia obesa, obesa in flower. That's a female. Let's see if we can capture its little female flowers. We got Pseudolithos from Somalia. Those things are bad. I mean, those things are just like crazy looking. Euphorbia symmetrica, some lithops back there. Haworthia cooperi, my friend gave me that one. That's actually what I have here is a truncata. So I've got two truncatas now, but this is a really cute little cluster. It's like just starting to cluster out there. Oh, and these are baby lithops. These are malachite, so they're the green ones or there's some of the green ones, there's different varieties of them. And then I have um, one of Michael's lithops down here, that little that little red one. But yeah, the lithops are really cute and they're very uh, variable. 
they really like the same type of lithops can really have a lot of different looks. So that's a handful of my tiny plants, but I love tiny plants because they don't take up a lot of space. They're super cute. They're really unique. And there's all kinds of crazy varieties of tiny plants and tiny succulents from all around the world that are just really, really neat. So that top shelf that goes across the three Ikea Vistro shelves, the glass shelves, that's just a long board, like one long 12 foot board that we got at. Uh, it was Home Depot or Lowe's and I just painted it white. If you saw a previous plant room video, you may have seen I had this table in here with a mirror on top of it. I loved it, but I had to move that uh, out of the plant room. I still have it. It's just in another part of the house right now. But anyway, I did have to move it out due to spider mites. And I realized that um, it was like a magnet for spider mites. So that was unfortunate because I really liked it. But I did uh, move in this mirror instead so I can still bounce light because that was part of my goal was to be able to bounce light off of this darker wall. Also, it bounces light from the grow light and from the windows. So it helps just brighten up this corner of the room. So I've got my monstera elbow on that plant stand and it just got done putting out a brand new leaf it actually i'm surprised at how fast this thing is growing because it popped out this leaf right after i potted it because i um this is pretty new to me i haven't had it for a long time i mean i guess i've had it for maybe like I don't know, three months now or something. I've got a video on it of when I first got it. Uh, I mean, I'm still working on that video. I'm editing and adding updates to it, um, but I, I filmed the repotting of it and like when it first came in and everything. And uh, right after I potted it up, it popped out this leaf. And then right after that, it put out this one. And now it's putting out, uh, well, it's got a little leaf bump back there happening. So it's it seems to be, it seems to be doing good. It seems to be happy, which I'm glad for. So I've got my Syngonium Albo that came from Steve's leaves. It's growing up beautifully. It's gotten quite tall now. And then I have Syngonium Botic, which has some really interesting patterns to the leaves. But yeah, I love, I love both of those. So yeah, that's what that wall looks like and a little bit of changes. Before I only had this Monstera in here and it was basically like stretched out over the whole wall, but I kind of had to turn it sideways and make room for this one. This one I had grown in different parts of the house. It was in our bedroom last, but it just was not getting enough light in there for a long enough uh, period throughout the day. Um, it just because I, I don't have like a grow light set. Like this is my main grow room. The rest of the house does not get enough light and it's dry air. So uh, the plants are most happy in here. So I try to keep most of them in here, unless it's like a desert uh, variety that does fine out there. But that's what's happening on that wall. It has now become the Monstera wall. Over here, I have my crystals. So I've got my crystallinums, this one. That's uh, the newest leaf on that one. And then I've got this crystal on this side. This is its newest leaf here. It's, it's not hardened off yet, so it's still, um, it's still filling out there. This one went through a little bit of spider mite trouble. I had that on the other side of the room uh, when I had the wood in here. Alocasia michalitziana here, Alocasia frydeck. It always tilts its leaves down when it's putting out a brand new leaf. That's, that's its newest leaf there. It's just starting to fill out. I forgot about the watermelon piperomia on this side. I have not seen these bloom before, but this one has started blooming. It has its little, its little flower spikes in there. And there's another one. But yeah, it's got all kinds of little flower spikes. It seems to be pretty happy. And it's got all kinds of new baby leaves coming in. And I probably need to water it because these things are thirsty. Yes, okay, the soil is dry. So it's probably ready for a drink of water. So at first I got one. And then when I saw the other two, I ended up getting those just because I was like, well, I better have backups because I wasn't sure how hard they were to grow. But yeah, so far the watermelon peperomias have done pretty well in here. So I'm very happy for that. Uh, they did have some mechanical damage um, from when I first got them they weren't in the best shape but they are putting out some beautiful new leaves so i think they seem to be happy as long as i keep up on their watering
All right guys, so I'll pull back here so you can get an idea of what the room looks like right now. Now this is not like the end all be all of the setup in here because things are always changing, you know, as plants grow, you find new places for them or, you know, if they need different lighting, then you can switch things around. But this is kind of like the basic idea for now as far as the updates go. So I figured I'd just take you around the room and give you a quick look at the different areas that we worked on. We've had these Spider Farmer 2000 lights up here and how we hung them was just using white chain. Um, they already came with these little, uh, these little, I don't know, carabiners, I guess. And I just attached the white chain to it. And so the white chain just wraps around the board. And that's how we have both of the spider farmer lights hung up here. So I actually came across that white chain at Lowe's or Home Depot. And then up top there, those lights are from Amazon. I think it's uh, the Relassi brand, something like that. I'll put the links for everything that I'm using in the plant room in the description box below in case anyone is curious and you want to know exactly uh, what products I'm using in here or where I found them, I'll try to list everything down below. And this is a small room, but I feel like there's still room to grow, you know, like it's not so overcrowded that, um, that you couldn't grow more in here if you wanted to. So everything is slowly coming together. And you know, whenever you're designing a space, you're, you're working with a color palette that fits your personality, your style, your taste. So the base of my color palette is white. And then I use the plants and the terracotta to kind of play off of each other and sort of uh, be the contrast and let those pop against the white. And then I also um, ended up including these kind of nude painted pots. Actually, Michael painted these pots for me, which was so sweet. I absolutely loved them. He took leftover paint that I had and just mixed up uh, his own variation of nudes. And so that's what these pots are. And I absolutely love how they turned out. I love nudes and like the warm tone nudes mixed with the terracotta and the white background and then the pops of greenery. I really like that color combination. And then cozy, warm textures of the rattan and baskets. And then live edge tables. I like the look of those. So I have one in here as a plant stand on our Monstera wall. So that one I found on Craigslist secondhand. I bought it for about 60 bucks, I think it was. So this space has not changed much. I still have my work desk over here. So whenever I'm repotting and filming videos with you guys in the plant room, I'm normally standing right in this space here. So I have the sit stand desk from Flex spot. I've been using that for a long time. I love that. It works perfectly for potting up plants and filming videos. So just to give you a quick look at what I have back here, I have a couple of string of hearts and then I've got a string of pearls. I'm trying that again because for the life of me, I kept killing these things, but I'm not going to give up. I, I have to keep trying. And then this is a really cool kind of item here from Africa. And then Sininjia leucotrica. That was on my desk, but I decided to move it up here. Uh, this plant doesn't look so hot up here, huh? It's, it's just sort of hanging out up there looking like it's keeled over trying to die. Um, it's not, I promise. It is, it is still alive. I just watered it actually. Um, but yeah, that one, it's still alive. It's just a cutting and it's just trying to, like the last leaf is trying to die off, but I, I will not cut it off until it's like actually, actually no more green left on it. And then my begonia collection is down here. That's a bench that we just moved in here and I didn't end up filming that. I, I don't know what happened. I just totally like spaced out and I just went ahead and moved it in forgot to turn the camera on and show you guys what I was doing back here. But um, I did have that extra kind of space and it was just like, oh, you know what? Let's just go and continue the shelves down and just move that bench in because it kind of it kind of fits in there. And I have all the begonias hanging out there. They are all polka dot begonias. Uh, they're all cane begonias, all polka dot cane begonias. So that's where I do most of my filming. And that's the background you guys normally see when I'm standing back there filming. And then this area that we updated, oh, I did not show you guys um, the Cebu Blue. I did move this plant here, the Cebu Blue, which I actually repotted that. So I had a bunch of cuttings that I had potted up in one pot, and then I had the original mother plant in a separate pot, and I just decided to combine them all together. Okay, hold on, let me turn this light off and then you won't be so blinded over here. You can see what's going on better. I have my prop boxes down there, so my propagations. I'll come in here and show you guys. Uh, this one is empty right now, but that one is gonna have plants going in there or like little wet sticks and stuff going in there, plants that I'll be propagating. Um, this currently has my Monstera siltibicanus, so I've got a bunch of little cuttings. So these are all basically single node stem cuttings that I did um, because the plant, it 
well, it, it went through a time with spider mites, and so it lost a bunch of leaves, and so I had a bunch of stem and that were that was leafless, and so I ended up uh, just you know treating it multiple times and then rescuing the stem, and now we have a bunch of new little baby baby monsters, little pecanos, and then I've got a wet stick plamanii there that does have some new growth happening there. So that's exciting. So that's what's happening in the propagation box. These are some of the crawling philodendrons that I have, uh, like the mame, uh, plowmanii, and that's actually the mother plant that I got the cuttings from. And it just put out a new leaf here. If I turn this so you can see. So, oh, look at that. Lovely. So it just put out that brand new leaf there. It's so pink in the middle here. It's so pretty. But yeah, that one, it had spider mites a while back and it really went through a hard time. You can see some of the fading that they caused on the, the older leaf, but um, it's recovering just fine. Like that is beautiful. It's, it's gonna be perfectly fine. That pest management, you know, sometimes you just gotta power through it and just know that you will eventually come out on the other side. This is the Postazanum, another one of the crawling philodendrons and it has a brand new leaf coming out there. Oh, and this one that's growing all crazy, the mammy, that one just put out a brand new leaf too. I've got this leaf here on the postazanum that's yellowing. That's actually from not enough light to that leaf. A plant will just start to cut off um, basically life to a leaf uh, if it's not producing energy for it. So that's what happened there. So yes, unfortunately, I had moved it to the other side of the room over here and it was not getting enough light to that leaf. So that did not work out. So I ended up moving it back over here where it was before. And let's see, any updates over on this side? Oh, I have my makeup brushes, which are dirty and need to be washed <laughs> desperately. I have them just sitting over there on the shelf uh, just to get them off the top of my desk to make more room for plants because I ended up getting this plant in. And here, actually I'll turn off the spider farmer grow light so you guys can see better. This is Syngonium Frosted Heart. This is a plant that I just got, but I had it kind of quarantined out in the front room. So I don't bring, I don't bring new plants into my plant room until I know that they're pest free. Um, so that is the Syngonium Frosted Heart. I love this. It just has a very satiny kind of pillowy look to it. Right now it's still in uh, its nursery pot and I just slipped it into a white pot from Walmart that I got on discount. It was like $2. So that's what all of these pots are down here. So all of these white ceramic pots, those are all $2 from Walmart. I'm gonna get it onto a moss pole. So I gotta make, um, make some moss poles. I'm gonna try a different design with the moss poles and see how it turns out. I'll let you guys know. One other update over here is I moved my variegated vanilla over here next to my other regular green vanilla. And I moved it over here just because I was nervous about it getting enough light and vanilla like bright light. So I wanted to make sure it was getting enough bright light. And then I have this other vanilla that is still in its nursery pot. It's waiting to get potted up as soon as I make moss poles. The watermelon peperomia, that's right. I did have that on the other side of the room, but because it started blooming, it kind of outgrew the shelves really quickly. So I had to, I had to move it so it would have more space to be able to bloom. And they also love overhead lighting. They just grow so full and so round and beautifully and just so plump looking. And I already showed you guys what is in this drawer in the micro organizing video that we did. So I'll just pop this open in case you didn't see that video. So I have all my beauty products in here. So all my cosmetics. So that's my little space where I come in every morning and get ready. And then in the center here, we have this plant island that we made just putting together plant pots, uh, using them as plant stands. And then that little tiny table there as a plant stand. And then the Orbifolia, I did move that over here. This is its newest leaf. Did, was that here when, when I filmed it last? That thing is it's getting big. It's got a brand new leaf coming out here. And look at this, you guys, it's blooming. I've got some crinkling leaves there. That was due to uh, dehydration, improper watering on my part. I was so excited when I saw that it was blooming there. So I finally started giving it more light and then it started giving me bigger leaves. So I'm pretty excited about my little Orbifolia. When I got this, it was just a little tiny baby and now it's getting bigger leaves. I love those big like dinner plate size leaves that they put out when they're getting more mature. I just think they're so pretty. That is my absolute favorite Calathea. It's got some ugly leaf there going on. I don't know what's going on with this one. This is the Philodendron Brandianum, and I don't know if I updated you guys on this, but I did put it on a moss pole, and I, ha I actually had two uh, rooted cuttings 
and then one tiny like baby plant and I just ended up finally potting them all together so that's what's going on here. Um, I, I just didn't feel like having them all separated like that. I'm trying to um, create less work. I've got this other watermelon peperomia up here uh, and you can see they get when they have overhead light they get so full all the way around they're just they're so lovely and um, yeah so far so good with those they they really seem to be thriving i've got three of those in this room this is the philodendron podatum on this side yeah that has been there so that hasn't changed i did move the birkin over here this is uh, currently an experiment it was a root rot rescue so i'm just gonna um, well it just recently got repotted so I'm gonna see if it pulls through. When I bought it, it had root rot, and I bought it specifically knowing that, but I wanted to rescue it for some reason. And I even paid full price for it. I was at uh, Lowe's, I think it was, but I just liked this one, and I just wanted to try to, try to save it. Um, so we'll see if that one pulls through, and I'm filming that, that's gonna be a separate video. The Alocasia Black Velvet is down there putting out a brand new leaf. They're so pretty and velvety and I love their texture. What a unique, what a unique leaf, you know? And then they have their pretty coloration with the brand new leaves that come out, kind of pinkish. That new leaf on the Plowmania yeah, just caught my attention again. It's so pretty, I love that. I'm gonna have to get a picture of that before it hardens off. Oh, and I'll post the link to the Elecombs humidifier and if they have any discount codes, I will have those linked below in the description box. So don't forget to check that out if you are in the market for a humidifier. And I think that's all. Oh, and I'll try to list uh, like my lights, spider farmer lights, um, the other lights that I have up top here, like anything that I can think of, I will have those listed below too. So all my favorite planty things. All right, guys, I love you. Have an awesome day. Take really good care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one. Bye.